Hey, boy. Yeah, I'm here with um. Nobody. I'm here with nobody. Um, and I was talking to her about um. You know, I was telling her that this year I'm gonna have a lot of money and stuff, right? And she's like, "Well, if you don't put the action into it, you know, it's not worth it. It's not. It's not gonna be of any value to you." I so I. It's not worth it. I said nothing will come from it. She said nothing will come from it if I don't put the work into it. All right? I'm not here to talk about my methodology to get money. You know, I get up, I take a shower, I work like everybody else. That's my. That's one of my methodologies. But I want to increase my finances this year. So she's talking about work, and I'm telling her, but miss, I do the supreme work. I do the Hare Krishna mantra. I said, for example, I could get on my prayer beads right now and chant the word money 108 times. I could do, I could do Ganesha mantras. I could do Kubera, Lakshmi mantras. She said, how's that working for you? Well, if I were to do those mantras, I would almost be guaranteed a material result, almost. Because once again, Srila Prabhupada teaches that a devotee can bless any person, any place, any time, anywhere, any circumstance at his whim and desire. Whereas the demigods can only grant you your wishes after you propitiate them with the proper rituals and sacrifice. Hear what I... Once again, I'm going to explain my position and then it's your duty to disprove my position. Understand? I'm the subject a question about what you're saying. The subject comes before the predicate. Okay. All right? Okay. The subject comes before the predicate. So I will state the subject. The subject is money. And then you will come with the predicates that describe whether I have money or not. And we'll describe the work that I'm doing or not doing to get that money. All right? So let's continue on. So you done threw me off. Anyway, let's take it from the beginning. So I'm telling her that the money mantra are for material results and that the demigods can only bless you if you please them properly. That's the, 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 the psychology behind that is pretty much you wash my hand and I wash yours. This is the reciprocity in the material world. It's a conditional relationship when you're dealing with demigods. So anyway, I could chant money all I want. I might get the money, I might not. But when you're chanting a spiritual mantra, it covers both the intellectual, the mental, and the sensual platform. Meaning, when chanting the Maha Mantra, you're doing the complete activity, the complete highest sacrifice. This is what I'm, I'm trying to explain, that this is what the Maha Mantra does. It's a spiritual mantra. So the results are guaranteed because it permeates all forms of strata. So that is the work for this age. How do I know? First of all, shout out to Taki Grant. Why? Because I owe you a debt of gratitude. You're the one who put me on to the science of Nubia, which is ancient Kush. You're the one who put me on to the, to the website dignubia.org. Now, this was early in my days of studying the Hare Krishna science. So this was around 2000, end of 2010, early 2011. Taki had me studying the Nubian civilization because he wanted me to go to Egypt with him and you know, he had great plans at the time. This was before the uh, uprising. So, you know, the plan was Nubia. Everything was all about Egypt and Nubia. And now they're discovering Osiris's tomb, which is different from Osiris's temple. Osiris's temple, if I'm not mistaken, is located in Abydos, Abydos. And what's so interesting is that it provides a particular challenge for the, what do you call them, archaeologists? Because they have to dig at levels where civilization did not exist according to European theories. Civilization or intelligent civilization did not exist at the ground level where they found the temple of Osiris. And it predates all of the other stuff in Egypt. So they got a big problem now because then it destroys all of their timelines. In dignubia.org, I'm about to prove that the Hare Krishna mantra is the supreme sacrifice. In a website called dignubia, just tell me what you want, I'll pick it up. I'm, I'm in um, Costco's. I'm in Costco's, you know, got to get this stuff. I'm advertising for my peoples, you know what I'm saying? They're going to give me a kickback because it's all about money in 2015, right? Anyway, right? So check it. In Dig, Dig Nubia, it will show you the Neolithic civilizations and the Pangrave civilization. And it will show you, according to the different levels of graves that the people dug, 
what time period they came from and in each of these grave sites it will show you the history of the world at that time and how it exactly matches up to the Vedic civilization and its timelines Indra Prabhu mentioned in one of his videos that for the age of Satya Yuga which was circa about three million years ago now Satya Yuga was the first age the golden age and in that age the way to achieve God or to reach God was through contemplative meditation sit down burn your incense wear some Egyptian musk oil take your bath on a mat of kusa grass and dare skins in a quiet secluded place away from civilization in an exalted state of mind you shall meditate here in the forest for 10,000 years and achieve God that's what they did in that age and we find evidence as the ages progress we start to find evidence in the graves of Nubia that the prescribed method of God realization now what is this God and money got to do with each other it's simple Krishna is the owner of all wealth he possesses all wealth he's unlimitedly rich whether he carries a wallet or not so once again to achieve God to achieve the service of God you're also going to use his supplies and his energies and his materials to serve him so if you're serving an unlimitedly wealthy person and you're a part of his kingdom you too are unlimitedly wealthy so his paraphernalia his money his gems his diamonds all of that is mine if I choose to engage it in his service properly but if I use it for my flesh then I'm a stupid um, there's a word that rhymes with grass hole anyway continuing on as we research the graves in ancient Nubia we'll find that the next age of Treta Yuga was the age of sacrifice this sacrifice was not on a normal level it was ostentatious because the world the planet earth mother Bumi used to give her wealth almost to an unlimited capacity to the inhabitants of the planet earth in the previous ages the only reason King Prithu was gonna kill mother Bumi he was gonna kill mother earth because there was drought in the land remember in the times of the pharaohs and in the times of the Raja Rishis the ancient righteous kings the noble saintly kings they would communicate with the demigods and the um, higher forces and there was no starvation or unemployment or cops murdering unarmed people there was no diseases there was no droughts in the ancient kingdoms because these were men of God who were appointed to be rulers However, Mother Bumi explained to King Pritu that the, there is no such thing as overpopulation and she can feed everybody on the planet easily. It's just that when the demonic population of the planet increases, she starts to withdraw and withhold her resources. Hence, the big land grab in Africa right now. Africa is one of the last places where there is unbounded wealth on the planet Earth. Coincidentally, less demons are born in Africa right now than on any other continent. How do you know? Just trace where all of the demonic activity of the planet is coming from. It's coming from the Western world. It's coming from the lands of the North, the lands of the Gentiles, according to Genesis chapter 10. And it's coming from the lands of the West, like America and its allies. That's where all of the devilishment is coming from. And where do you have the most problems on the planet Earth? Believe it or not, Europe and America look at the economy I mean I don't I don't even want to go in that direction right now the problems on the planet earth is in Europe and America and Australia basically wherever the Europeans left from and started trouble around the planet earth that's where the problems are right now this is true talk I don't care if you don't like it I got facts I got facts facts is the new word you know what I'm saying facts is the new what's the word keep it real what was the words people used over time you know all of them old words you know them old school words Huh? You ain't old enough? Oh, okay. That's what I get for hanging with shorties. Anyway, right? So long story short, the evidence of the Vedic ages are found in the graves of Nubia because you see evidence of great ritualistic sacrifices in the graves of Nubia. If you go north to Egypt, you'll find evidence of the age of temple worship. So once again, everything that's in the Vedas is confirmed by the by the archaeological process and this is not a, a, a movement for 
sentimentalists. We have some of the great scientific minds in our movement, like the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. Please, these guys were archaeologists. They didn't have a dollar to their name. They were sitting around basically in loincloths, chanting all day and writing books, living under trees. Yet, they found some of the greatest archaeological sites on the planet and sites of spiritual significance. So these were highly erudite, educated hierophants. These were not regular neophytes who just want to follow a religion because they feel sentimental. How you feel, love? I'm doing me a little YouTube. You want to get on YouTube real quick? Let me ask you a question. You sure? Tell me about the old days of East Elmhurst. Anyway, I'm having fun with it. So I'd just like to say that for this age now, the prescribed method of God realization is something called Hari Nam Sankirtan. For lack of a better word, the highest sacrifice, the highest activity you could do, whether materially engaged or spiritually engaged, is chanting the holy names of the Lord. That is the method for this day, because life is so hard, consequentially, the religious or spiritual process should be easy. In the olden days when the earth was so abundant and wealthy, you didn't pretty much have to work to eat. The mango tree would bend down and give you its fruit. So, the spiritual scientific process was a little harder in those days, but it wasn't so hard because your mind was strong. It was built for meditation. Right now, you could be on a website reading about the history of Malcolm X. The next minute you're on rude.com, you know what I'm saying, checking out all of the women. So our minds are really messed up. We got the monkey mind in this age. And the only thing that could train the mind of a monkey jumping from tree to tree or the mind of a poisonous cobra snake is the sound of the flute, is the vibration of sound. So in the beginning was the word, and in the end will be the word. Hurry bowl.